I want to start off by saying Brakatha Yahawu, Brakatha Yaharashai, Brakatha Yahawu, Brakatha Yaharashai, Kohala Yahawa Ba Shim Yahashai, Kohala Yahawa Ba Shim Yahashai, Ba Shim Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles at Great Millstone that told me this doctrine in truth and sincerity. Shalom unto the elect. The Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh, which means He is or He exists. By Hashem, in the name of His only begotten Son, the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. We know His name to be Yahweh Shai, which means He is the deliverer. He is the Savior for the Hebrew Israelites from the pedigree of your father. By Hashem, in the name of the Rakak Wadash, which means the Holy Spirit that's able to give us the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of who we are, which are the true Hebrew Israelites. The so called Negro, so called Latino, so called Native American are of the speckled bird, looking like the other nations in your spirit. Bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yahweh Hashem Al Shai. You could be one of the elect. Shalom. We've been discontinued from our heritage because we went off falling after false gods and false idols. Now following the law set your commitments that was given to us by our forefathers. And because of those offenses, we are set into captivity. But through our Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, being that perfect sacrifice in the flesh to the Heavenly Father, he's been given all power to be able to sit on the right-hand side of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, to be able to open the seals of this book, to be able to give the understanding to the disciples, apostles, the prophets, and the men on down, to be able to wake up the tabernacle of David before the said destruction. And with that knowledge, wisdom, understanding, we're able to know who our oppressor is, which is Esau, Edom. Esau is a so-called white man, and today Esau means wasted away he is, and they are the biblical Edomites, that it speaks about in the scriptures, the wicked of today. And it would be the um, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Oppenheimers, the DuPonts, the Warburgs, the ships, the ones that would have the fatness of the earth, control of the monetary system, and they would be able to deceive the nations through their enchantments and through their sorcery, and they would rule with the great sword. And they would have a perpetual hatred towards you so-called Negroes, so-called Latinos, so-called Native Americans. Okay? And that's what the message is. Okay? Thus said the Lord that we have enemies and our enemies want to slay us. They have a perpetual hatred, an everlasting hatred that goes all the way back to the beginning. Okay, all the way back to Cain and Abel, where Cain was the wicked one and he slayed Abel. Abel was the righteous one. Okay, and in this time you have Esau, which is the so-called white man. And then you have Jacob, which is so-called Negro, so-called Latino, so-called Native Americans. Okay, and Esau is the wicked. Okay, he's in power, the international bankers. OK, and um, you are at the bottom. You are the borrower, not the lender. OK, and we are subject to the curses. And one of those curses would be that our enemies would, um, you know, reap up our lands, you know, uh, divide the family. OK, and they would slay us with the sword. OK, and that's what this lesson is going to be centered around. Um, this video I was watching yesterday, it's called um, it's on black culture a lot. Now that that word black, again, is a false social construct. OK, that's why we say so-called black. Right. And we're here to cast out imagination as far as that, um, you know, that imagery of our people, because we're different shades of brown. Right. And um, Esau Edom has painted himself as white, um, which there's which white means purity. And there's nothing pure about him but his wickedness. OK. And so we're here to, you know, through the power of Yahweh Shema Shai, expose this devil and the wickedness that he has done. Okay, and this is one of the reasons why we hate Esau. Okay, first reason is the Lord hates Esau, spoken about in the scriptures. But this right here is one of the, one of the uh, another reason why. Okay, and there's many. There's manifold reasons. This says Gator Bay is when slave owners threw black infants and babies alive into swamps to chum the water to catch alligators, slave babies as Gator Bait. Okay. So this depiction right here, this is actually a postcard, okay, that, um, you know, Esau would send to one another, okay, far as gifts, okay, to, um, you know, honor the things that they would be doing, okay? And this is also spoken about in the scriptures. When you read um, in Revelation, okay, let me get it over here about the hatred they would have towards our people. Okay, but I want to get this one in a, a Revelation 11 and about eight. <clears throat> this is Revelation. Let's see. That they would send what gifts to one another. Bear with me. 
All right, let's see. Revelation 11. Yeah, right, 10. It says, Revelation 11 and 10. And they, it says, And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts to one another because the two prophets tormented them dwell that dwell on the earth. So those two prophets would be the northern and southern tribes. Okay, coming back together um, and on being on one accord. Okay, but with this testimony, um, we are destroying Esau Edom's kingdom because it is revealing the things and the, 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 the darkness that he has done. Okay, and bringing it to the light. Let's read this again. Revelation 11 and 10. Let me read it in the NLT. All the people who belong to this world will go over them and give presents to each other to celebrate the death of the two prophets who have tormented them. Okay, so, um, and this is what they do. Okay, and one of those signs is those postcards. They would also uh, chop off um, the rod and send it to one another. Uh, they would make jackets out of uh, Jake, out of their skin. Okay, and also they would what? Uh, send these postcards. Okay, showing you the, the, the wickedness that they would be doing. Okay, and also they would what? Ship one of us back and forth. Okay, because you had the northern tribes that were over here in the, in the Americas being sent over there back to Africa. Okay. Um, where we were being, uh, where we were refugees. We're not from Africa, but we were refugees. Strong's G, 1435. Doran. Doran. Okay. So gifts, a gift, a present, offered an expression of honor. So these postcards were an expression of honor of what we're doing and, and how we are putting forth our hatred towards you so-called Negro, so-called Latino, so-called Native Americans. Okay. Of sacrifices of other gifts offered. Okay, so, um, so again, the offering of gifts, and the point I want to get out of there is to the gifts offered expression of honor. Okay, these were seen as you're doing a good thing towards you know for as far as with the Edomites, you're doing a good thing um, by doing this to to, um, to these uh, so-called Negroes. Okay. And why were they doing that? Because they have a perpetual hatred going all the way back to the beginning. Okay. This is Ezekiel 35 and 5. It says, Because thou hast a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword and time of calamity and the time of the iniquity had an end. So what type of person, um, you know, uh, throws children into uh, gators, okay, for, um, for clothing? Okay, a person with a perpetual hatred. Okay, so the camps out there that are saying we're not supposed to hate Esau, the Lord hates Esau. And this is one of the reasons why, because he is the devil, he is the deceiver, because he'll walk around like he hasn't done nothing. Okay, and they've wreaked benefits, uh, money. Um, you know, uh, uh, gators are the one of, one of the most expensive, okay, um, you know, things. When, you, when I'm going to go into the video, okay, as far as the different... Um, you know, products far as, you know, the, the clothing. And that was the reason why, because the person, the people that had money back then, they wanted this, wanted the, they had a need for it. Okay. So they, they used the babies because again, going into the perpetual hatred, going into, um, the conquistadors when they conquered, um, or when they, uh, were taking down the Tainos. Okay. What were they doing? They were uh, using dogs. Okay. They the, the dogs would tear them up and eat them. And even eat the babies. Okay, this is the perpetual hatred. This it didn't it didn't just happen to uh, one of the tribes. All the tribes were getting, it, but particularly um, the so called so called black man, the Negroes, which would be the tribe of Judah. The head tribe gets it the worst because they are the head. Okay, Ezekiel thirty five and five in the NLT. Your eternal hatred, your eternal hatred for people of Israel led to your butcher them. They were helpless. They were helpless. A baby is helpless. Okay, and a lot of the times they would go steal these babies. Okay, they weren't, uh, the Israelite mom wasn't just giving them up. Okay, they would go and steal them and, and they would use force. They would use that sword. Your eternal hatred for people of Israel led to your butcher, led, led you to butcher them when they were helpless, when I already punished them for all their sins. Yeah, because the Lord has, um, there was a point in time where we weren't supposed to be punished anymore. But what happened, Esau, Edom helped what afford that affliction. Okay, he surpassed uh, the, let's get it, Zechariah 1 and 15. I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease, for I was but a little displeased, and they helped forward the affliction. So they kept going. 
and their wickedness. Okay, Zechariah 1 and 15 in the NLT. But I am very angry with the other nations because all these nations profited of us being at the bottom. Okay, but I am very angry with the other nations that are now enjoying peace and security. I was only a little angry with my people, but the nations inflicted harm on them far beyond my intentions. Okay, and one of these is the gator bait. Okay, the buck breaking. Okay, um, you know, the drowned towns, um, the, the man in the house rule. Okay, um, the crack, the heroin, um, you know, this, uh, the, 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 the alpha, the happy people thing. Okay. The list goes on and on of things and a lot of things we don't even know about. So let's read this again. Ezekiel 35 and 5. Because thou hast a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword. And the time of their calamity and the time of their iniquity had an end. So we're at the end of their them being in rulership and their perpetual hatred. And perpetual goes into everlasting. Okay, and who is this speaking about? Ezekiel 35 and 2, son of man. So it starts with the men. The men are supposed to be out there prophesying. The women are not supposed to be putting scriptures up or out there prophesying. Okay, that's not their job. Their woman is to, to be in order and find a husband. Ezekiel 35 and 2, son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. Okay, so what is Mount Seir? Genesis 36 and Okay, Mount Seir is in an, Yeah, right here Genesis 36 and 8 Thus dwell Esau and Mount Seir Esau is Edom Okay, Esau is Edom And this is where Esau, Edom dwelt Okay, so we're supposed to prophesy uh, Any place that Esau, Edom uh, pitches his tent Okay, and that's throughout the four corners of the earth. That's why you have brothers that are uh, prophesying uh, throughout the four corners of the earth. Okay, uh, Peru, America, you know, Babylon the Great. Okay, UK. Okay, uh, Jamaica, um, Mexico. Okay, these these are places where Esau uh, puts his has put his tent, and the Lord has put his men to be able to confound and to be able to condemn our enemies. Genesis 36 and 8, thus dwell Esau, okay, which is the so-called white man, which Esau means wasted away he is, okay, and Mount Seir, Esau is Edom, okay, the Idumeans, okay, which goes into the, what, the Greek, okay, which means red, going into their pigmentation or their lack thereof of their blood showing through, and this would be these international bankers of today. Now, the Lord's heritage is of a speckled bird, but we're speaking about the ones that are at the top that are bringing forth these wicked, wickedness and these evils. OK, and these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites and Mount Seir. OK, and the list goes on into their lineage. OK, and they call themselves dupes and they still call themselves dupes. That's one of the uh, another reason how we how we know who they are. But also they would be pushing forth with that great sword. OK, this is Genesis. Uh, what is that? Twenty seven and forty. And this is going back to the, the beginning when, when Jacob, uh, you know, Jacob and Esau were, were born, okay? And, and going into the blessings that Isaac gave them, okay? And once they were given the blessings, this is what, uh, what, what, it, what entailed. Genesis 27 and 41, and Esau hated Jacob. So Esau hated Jacob. So are we supposed to hate Esau too? Yeah, okay? It's a, it's a, it's a perpetual hatred. It goes both ways. Okay, but does that mean we gather up arms and start being cardinal? No, we use this word. Okay, this word is our sword that cuts our adversary because the word is the truth. And that is the light that exposes Esau, Edom and makes him bare. Okay, exposes him. That's the thing is expose him. And then the Lord's going to going to put his lights out, far as, you know, far as the chariots on top and, and destroying his kingdom. But this this word has to be prophesied. These things have to be fulfilled. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessing him going into covetousness. Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing. What's the blessing of Jacob? Immortality, salvation, okay, an everlasting kingdom. Esau's blessing was the sword and the fatness of the earth, but it was only for a short period of time. And we're at the end where all where the um, our captivity is being fulfilled, okay. And and Esau's captivity is is starting to begin. Okay, his father's blessing him and Esau said in his heart, so said in his mind, okay, the days of mourning for my father are at hand, then I will slay my brother Jacob. And these words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rebekah, and she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said unto him, Behold, thy brother Esau is touching thee, do comfort himself, proposing to kill thee. 
And that's the same thing. He's still plotting on how to be able to destroy you. Okay, but whenever we've gone into captivity, we've always multiplied. Okay, <laughs> we've always multiplied, even in even in captivity. Okay, because the Lord said, "Be fruitful and multiply." Okay, and the spiritual because Rebecca it was a, as a woman. Okay, the mother of of the two of the of the twins, but they they're two manner of people, one good and one evil. Okay, but but um, you know, the woman is symbolic to wisdom, and wisdom told what Jacob to get away. <clears throat> and that's the same thing that's going on right now. Wisdom, Sophia, that's from Yahabba Shema Shai, is telling us to get away from this man and who he is. Okay? This is Luke 8 and 17. That veil is being lifted up. Eight, Luke 8 and 17. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Yeah, for all that is secret will eventually be brought into the open and everything that is concealed will be brought to the light and made known to all. Because when you hear this story, they're trying to say it's just a, um, you know, it's just a, a folk story. OK, but it's not because there's evidence of things that were happening of these postcards and things like that. OK, of these devils and their perpetual hatred. OK, so I'm going to show the video. <clears throat> This was Let me read this one more time. It says Gator Bait is when slave owners. So who were who were the slave owners? Okay, Esau Edom. They were the ones in the control. And the video is going to show that through black infants, so the so-called black men, you Hebrew Israelites, and babies alive, going into the ones that had no, they were helpless. Okay, alive into the swamps, to the chum, to the water, to catch alligators, to slave babies as Gator Bait. Okay, so let's go on the video. Reported in many publications in the early 1900s, and there are some records to back it up, in the 1800s to 1900s. Alligator hunting was a big business, a lucrative trade. The skin from these animals was used to make belts, bags, shoes, and other highly sought after products. The white settlers saw the land and its wealth as unlimited. So, they would continuously deplete its resources, whether that meant mining, agriculture, or hunting wildlife. Crocodile and alligator hunting was a highly popular sport in the late 1800s and the early 1900s. Among all exotic leathers, both alligator and crocodile skins were very expensive and well-like products. But the only way to get these skins was to hunt wild animals. And since the demand for the raw material went up, the rich were willing to pay good money for it. This meant more and more people were eager to take the deal. In the 19th century, people used rifles, muskets, and shotguns. Now, I'm not talking about the fast-loading, quick-shooting type of weapons we use today. This is 19th century technology that uses simpler and older mechanisms. In most cases, you would have to load the muzzle with gunpowder before you could aim and shoot. A lot of people without military experience could only manage to shoot two shots per minute. Some weapons that use the... All right, let me fast forward a little bit. And what is the what is uh, Esau bear? The sword, Okay. He was given the sword, Genesis 27. He was given the sword, okay? And what was he doing this? He was doing this for, for money, okay? Ultimately, the perpetual hatred, but also doing it for money. He see it as a business, and he didn't. He wasn't worried about the shedding of blood, okay? There's a scripture. This is uh, Exodus. So even though they had us in captivity, they were still doing this. Okay, Exodus 21 and 16. And he that stealeth the man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. Okay, so we are found in his hand. Okay, and they were selling us back and forth. And in that uh, oppression, they were uh, taking the babies, okay, and, and, and um, deleting them. Okay, and there's a, there's a punishment for that. Arm or leg, and in some cases, their lives, trying to catch and kill these predators. So they decided to use bait that would lure the alligators from their swamps and turn them into easy prey. But this was no ordinary bait. Some say small black children were often used as bait to catch these apex predators. This might have happened in Louisiana, Florida, and any other parts of the South. White men would come to steal the babies, sometimes in broad daylight, at other times, when the mothers weren't looking, and take these children to the swamp, put them in pens, or tie them with a rope and leave them right next to an alligator's den. In a matter of minutes, the alligators would come out and go after their prey. This is brutal, gut-wrenching. This is a vintage postcard from Florida. It depicted the horrible image of white people using children as alligator bait. Such a deep level of racism was highly prevalent in the American South and was often used to attract tourists 
making it a hotspot for white hunters. During the Jim Crow era, African Americans lived a horrible life. They were often mistreated, beaten, and killed in the most brutal way imaginable. If there was a way to oppress, maim, murder, or use black people, they would find it. The atrocities were endless. So, IUIC, is that love? Is that love? Is that the love we're supposed to have for Esau, for the things that he has done? Okay. Ezekiel 35 and 5. Because thou hast a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of calamity in their time and iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, said Yahweh Shemarash, I will prepare thee unto blood and blood shall pursue thee. So the Lord's going to prepare these devils for blood. We don't have to do it. We're, we're supposed to just learn, eat the whole roll and go out and teach. Therefore, as I live, said Yahweh Shemarash, I will prepare thee unto blood and blood shall pursue thee. Since thou hast not hated blood, so you didn't hate blood, you love doing this, you love finding different ways to be able to kill Jake, the hanging of the sword, the slicing of the, uh, uh, you know, the, the hanging, the hangings, the open hangings in the, in the, uh, the you know, the, uh, the city, okay, the, 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 you know, the chopping of the neck, okay, the, uh, the constant mutilation of our, of our bodies, chopping off our rods and things like that, therefore I live, Okay, therefore, as I live, said Yahweh Shemashai, I will not pair thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee, since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. So blood's going to pursue them. Okay, and we don't have to gather up arms. Let the let Yahweh Shemashai send forth. Okay, Yahweh Shemashai is known as the destroyer. Yahweh Yahweh Shai is known as the destroyer. Okay, Yahweh is known as the uh, El Shadia, a demon like power. Okay, and the Lord, He will not recompense, He will not let our enemy go. Okay, He's not going to get off. He's not getting off scot free at all. The Lord is angry with the wicked every day. Nahum 1 and 3. The Lord Yahweh Shemashai is slow to anger and great in power, will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord Yahweh Shemashai had his way in the whirlwind, in the storm, in the clouds, and the dust at his feet. So the Lord will not at all acquit the, uh, the wicked. Okay. They were a part of normal life. Some reports show that black children being used as alligator bait really happened. It happened to real people. Even though it might not have been a highly common practice, it did happen in some regions, especially in the South. It is hard to even process how someone can think of something like that. But for the deformed and deranged human mind, atrocities such as these were deemed normal. That yeah, because this, they are what... Um, atrocities... Yeah, they have a deranged... Let me, get, let me go back to that. ...to even process how someone can think of something like that. But for the deformed and deranged human mind, atrocities such as these were deemed normal. That's because black people were seen as subhuman, worthless, and savage. And the lives of animals were considered yeah, more valuable... Yeah, call us Indian means savage. Okay? That's why we say so-called Indian or so-called Native American. Because we're not savages. We actually had, um, you know... Uh, customs to, you know, um, for the land, you know, have fallen the land Sabbath. Now we were going off in certain areas, but we had, we had more values <laughs> than, than Esau Edom could ever have because he wasn't given to him. He was, he was profane and outside the temple. So they paint us, um, through what slander. Okay. By slandering us and say, we're what three fifths of men. Okay. Um, you know, and pass unrighteous decrees. Okay. And paint us in the light of, um, that we're just, we're just niggas, spigs, and wetbacks, okay? When we're actually Yahweh Shemashai's uh, uh, chosen people. It says, Psalms 50 and 19, Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. And that's deceit. Because they were they, they see it as, um, you know, by feeding our babies to gators, that that is okay. Okay? That's their sick, demented mind. Okay? This is the basis of men. Okay? This is the basis of men that the Lord set up. The wicked. Okay, this guy, he's not, he's, um, he's only set up to do wicked. Okay, that's why these, these, these acts are, are the most wicked things, because they are the most foul things in the world. Okay, they are the disease that the physician is coming to, 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 de to destroy. Psalms 50 and 19, thou givest thy mouth to evil and thy tongue frameth deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother, thou slanderest thy own mother's son. And that's what they do. They slander and they try to justify it. Um, by saying these are these are just animals, okay. When we're actually uh, their brother, okay. But they are the wicked brother, 
Okay, and we are what the righteous one, according to Yahabba Shema Hashat. Okay, that's why the Lord hates Esau. Okay, it's not about if we, we follow what the Lord wants. Okay, to the best of our ability. We don't follow what man wants. This is Romans 3 and 10. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. So there's not one that's righteous. They are profane outside the temple. They are the wicked. They can't do right. Okay, it speaks about in um, Isaiah... It speaks about they can never, you know, they can never do right. Let me see if I can find it, but let me keep reading this. This is Romans 3 and 10. As is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after the Mosiah. Yeah, because a fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Okay? And they don't seek after Yahab Shem Shai in none of their ways. Okay? If they have a Bible in their hand, they're actually going the opposite of that Bible. Okay? Because the Bible is not made for them. Okay, it's not made, you know, it's not made for them at all. Okay, it's made for you Hebrew Israelites. But what do you Hebrew Israelites do? You deny the Bible. You deny the Lord by coming in those white pale face images. Okay, or following those white pale face images. This is and following Esau, Edom. Ultimately, if you're following him, you're following death. Okay, this is Romans 3 and 11. There is none that understand it. There is none that seeketh after the Most High. They are all gone out of their way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. So there's not one that doeth good. Okay, because you have a lot of Jake that will say, um, you know, Esau, eat him. He, he's, you know, he gives me welfare. He, you know, he gives me a job. No, the Lord does that. And if he do it, because it speaks about in Sirach 14 and 7, if he doeth good, he doeth unwillingly. At last, he will declare his wickedness. Okay, he doesn't like you. He has a perpetual hatred. There's not one that does his good. It's in his blood. It's in his DNA to be wicked. Okay? Not to be what righteous. Yeah, right here. Uh Twadi Haba Shaman Shai. Isaiah 26 and 10. Let favor be shown to the wicked, yet he will not learn righteousness. In the land of uprighteousness, he will deal unjustly, he will not behold majesty of the Lord. Okay? And he does not do that at all. Okay? He just puts the, the, the image like he's godly when he's actually the devil. And devil means deceiver. Okay? Let me read this in NLT. Isaiah 26 and 10. Your kindness, it says, your kindness to the wicked does not make them do good. Yeah, so it doesn't matter how many uh, how many references you give to Esau, Edom, how many uh, votes, you know, you vote, you vote for Esau. Okay? How many times you say you love Esau? Okay, it, it, it's not going to change who he is. It says your kindness. Yeah, Isaiah 26 and 10 in the NLT. Your kindness to the wicked does not make them do good. Although others do right, the wicked keep doing wrong and take no notice of the Lord's majesty. Why do they do that? Because they are set up to do the, to be the wicked. Okay, Romans 3 and 12. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that do with good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher with their tongues. They have used deceit, okay, deceit, saying that we're just three-fifths of men. Um, they're, you know, they're just um, the, the, the Darwinism, which is nothing, which is false. Um, you know, uh, they can't pass certain tests. Okay, this place was set up for us to, to, to fail. It wasn't set up, set up for us to thrive. It was set up for us to suffer because we're under the curses. Romans 3 and 13, their throat is an open sepulcher with their tongues. They have used deceit, the poison of asses under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Yes, yeah, so cursing goes into violence. Okay, they push forth violence on the people to, to follow their wicked ways, to follow their agenda. Okay, to, to have anything in this, uh, um, you know, uh, you know, in this society. Okay, far as the different celebrities, what do they have to do? They have to sell their soul. They have to they have to bow down to violence or to some tor some sort of uh, demonism, okay, some sort of demonic energy, cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Yeah, they're quick to commit murder. Okay, and that's what they were doing with all those babies because we still don't know how many people they actually deleted. Okay, destruction and misery are in their ways. Yeah, destruction and misery are in their ways. They're quick to do mischief. They can't do right. It says, in the way of peace, they have not none. So they don't have no sense of peace. Okay? Romans 9 speaks about the, the vessel of wrath fitted for destruction. They were given a great sword. They are doing their job. That's why we have to do our job on the right-hand side. It says, they. It says, 
and the way of peace they have not none. There is no fear of the Most High before their eyes. Yeah, because even to the end, they're going to keep doing evils. That's why we're going to have that rod of iron that speaks about in Revelation 2 and 20. Okay. Old and that's the black human child. Experts found a couple of news articles published in the 19th and 20th centuries. These written pieces contained evidence of this horrible activity. The children who were used as bait were probably not infants. They were taught to run out, sit, or make noises just at the right moment. When the alligator would burst out of its hiding place, the hunters would shoot. This created the perfect opportunity to catch the alligator off guard. Here's an article from the Washington Times from 1908. The word pickaninny is used to refer to a black child. This was a stereotype used to demean black children. White people used the term when they wanted to talk about something almost inhuman. Un See? And look at those pictures that they're, they're, they're picking. They'll use, uh, um, you know, so-called white people, and then they'll, they'll paint them with blackface. Okay, that's another thing. Defacing the image um, of our people, and then a, a pick a nigga, uh, or pick a niece, okay, which is a byword, okay? Um, you know, and, and when you watch this, if you don't get a, get upset, and I'm not talking about gathering up arms. I'm talking about vexing your spirit. Then the Lord's probably not dealing with you because this is the type of stuff that Esau Edom is, is doing. Um, you know, is doing and has done. Okay. And he's going to do even worse as far as those that are not paying attention. Those that are not, don't have the covering of Yahweh Shemel Shai. Deuteronomy 28 and 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all the nations, whether Yahweh Shemel Shai shall lead thee. Yeah, because um, a byword is a name that you, that's not your name. And that was used to what slander our people by calling us a, a, a Picanese or whatever it was. Okay, black, uh, Puerto Rican, all those are bywords. Okay, and this would be, um, you know, a sign of who we would be because we would be under these type of curses. We would be, um, let me get a scripture. Let me get, I'll go to this one. This is Deuteronomy 28. Yeah, Deuteronomy 28 and 66 in the NLT. Your life will constantly hang in the balance. You will live night and day in fear and unsure if you will survive. In the morning, you will say, if only it were night. And in the evening, you will say, if only it were morning. For you will be terrified by the awful horrors you will see around you. Yeah, and this is an awful horror. Okay, you have a baby and now your baby's gone. And then, and then you see Esau laughing, carrying the gator. Okay? I mean, you know. Kept and filthy. It was something dispensable. This was a common depiction even in popular media. The article talks about a zookeeper sending two black children into a paddock with more than 25 alligators and crocodiles. The hungry reptiles started chasing the children. This was a tactic they used to lead the reptiles back into their tank so that the tourists could view the animals in the summer. But there is more. Here's another article, this time from Richmond Times Dispatch, issued in 1919. Here, in this mini story, we can see that the white community was not really happy with Florida authorities' decision to ban the use of African-American children as gator bait. Then, it goes on to mock these children as if it was their fault. Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 9. For the Inquisition shall be made unto the counsels of the ungodly. So an Inquisition is a heavy courtroom setting. Is a courtroom setting, okay, of uh, the prophets pointing out the things that Esau Edom has done, okay, uh, through the scriptures. Okay, we're testifying, okay, against our enemy in a, in a courtroom setting. For inquisition shall be made unto the counsels of the ungodly. Yeah, this is the ungodly right here, the ones that did this to our people. Okay, and the sound of the word shall come unto the Lord Yahweh for the manifestation of the wicked deeds. Yeah, for the manifestation, these things are being revealed and, and, and brought to what uh, the light. Okay, far as brought into the open and Esau Edom, far as his image is being destroyed. Okay, um, far as his is a uh, you know pale face, a uh, uh, you know squeaky clean uh, suit wearing image is now being uh, tarnished. When you read seventy Psalm seventy three and twenty, as a dream when one awaketh, so O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise his image. Ultimately, his image will be despised worldwide. Okay, because he will have no power in his hands, and he will be. Everybody would know this is the devil. Okay. For the 
sudden disappearance of alligators because they supposedly ate the pickaninnies and had digestive problems as a result. Yeah, and this is another wicked thing, okay? Um, and this 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 is gonna piss you off right here, if you're if you're of the elect, okay? Of the hopeful elect, we'll say. As if it was their fault. For Let me get this. Here, in this mini story, we can see that the white community was not really happy with Florida authorities' decision to ban the use of African American children. See? And the Edomites were unhappy. The so-called white men was unhappy because they're not they're not able to to throw babies, our babies, into the gator bait. So so the, the Edomites down there they got unhappy. Okay, so so this is this is when I read Romans three and ten. There is not one that doeth good. Okay. Skater bait. Then it goes on to mock these children as if it was their fault for the sudden disappearance of alligators because they supposedly ate the pickaninnies and had digestive problems as a result. This is just vile. Here's another article from St. Louis Republic, published in 1902. See? This one describes. Did you hear that? They said that because of the because of the the, the babies, uh, were were you know had stuff in them or whatever. That's why the, the gators started to die away. So they made just just straight up, you know, straight up a uh, slander, okay, and and shows you the um. <clears throat> let me get a scripture. Zechariah eleven and five, who opposers slay them and hold themselves not guilty, and they they said they sell. Them say, "Blessed be Yahweh Shai, for I am rich, and their own shepherds pity them not." Yeah, so who would buyers and slaughters their sheep without remorse? The sellers say, "Praise the Lord! Now I am rich. Even the shepherds have no compassion for them." Yeah, so the buyers and the slaughters their sheep without remorse. They don't care, okay? Because also uh, Jake was their slaves, so they were openly just, you know. Uh, destroying their own people or not their own people but destroying their property okay for what the love of killing okay and all the floats featured in the veiled prophet parade of the city the veiled prophet organization was a secret society established by a former confederate soldier you organized this parade to depict the history of the louisiana purchase float number 15 titled plantation life in louisiana showcased a scene where a massive alligator was depicted devouring a chubby young african-american child articles were not the only forms of content that would cover this horrible imagery of alligator baits there are also postcards branding posters and memorabilia all providing the exact same thing this is a postcard and it is one of the many examples that show black children being used as alligator bait in the United States, these early postal cards were the text messages of their time. They were cheap and practical to make and could reach a wide range of audience. At the time, they were meant to be mailed as commercial ads. Many of these postcards were printed with small designs or sketches called vignettes. They had a message on the side. At first, the cards were made just in black, but in time, they became increasingly available in color. The many surviving examples of such postcards tell a horrendous story. They were meant to address the people willing to use the lives of black children to collect a prized commodity, alligator skin. The white hunters were using human blood and flesh to lure monstrous crocodiles and alligators. To prepare for the activity, it is said that some white people kidnapped black children, tied them to a string, and dropped them in the swamps. Others would get groups of children and order them to stay over the alligator swamp near the open mouths of hungry alligators. These children were fed to the predator's hole. This is a documented event that can also be seen in old artifacts, such as product packaging and knickknacks. Here is a classic example. Revelation 13 and 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Example of household ornaments that were sold in areas where alligator baits were deemed a tourist attraction. At the time, the shelves and stores were covered with these decorative objects. These antiques come in bold colors and highly intricate designs that don't shy away from America's brutal past. Many of these trinkets are displayed in the Jim Crow Museum of Racist Imagery. This was a system built upon itself to create and keep a society stuck in a vicious cycle of racial hierarchy. The gator bait was also included in popular rhymes and songs. 
Take The Mammy's Little Alligator Bait by Henry Wise and Sidney Perrin, for example. This lullaby was published in 1899. The lullaby teaches readers to sing and play a song about the gator bait. I can only guess who was reading it. Probably white children. The lyrics are relatively simple and easy to follow, and the music appears to be easy to perfect. I can't even imagine to what lengths did white parents go to to shape and corrupt the minds of their children, filling them up with ideas of pure hatred and racism, even before they were ready to understand right from wrong. Here's another example, this time a poem. This one gets to the point right away. It describes how a white hunter can't find a standard bait to catch a crocodile, but there are some black children playing around, which can serve as the perfect replacement. He can place the child on a hook and leave it to dangle over the swamps. The hunter waits, and the tempting bait does its job, and then swoops in for the kill. There's another book called Amos that talks about an alligator and black children. This book was published in 1957 in New York by the Comet Press Books. In this story, two young children of African-American descent, called Buttercup and Amos, are playing in the swamp. They meet a crocodile named Snip Snip, and the three become best friends. Now, this plot is the complete opposite of what we see in other stuff. The children play happily with the crocodile, and there's no tragic ending. In the book, Amos and Buttercup embarked on an exciting journey alongside Snip Snip, even riding on the crocodile's back. The trio ventured into a cave where Buttercup fell frightened. See? And these are the type of stories that they, they, they push, okay? Because what do they push? They push it onto their children, okay? They pass on the, the legacy of being wicked to their children, and they teach them up from, from, a, from a, a baby, okay? This is Luke 17, and this is why King David said, uh, disappoint them, okay? Uh, I'm going to read a little bit of this. This is uh, Luke. I'll start from here. Luke 17. Luke 17 and 8, keep me as the apple of thy eye, hide me under the shadow of thy wings. So the apple of the Lord's eye is Israel, okay, but particularly the, the elect, okay, the elect are really the apple of the Lord's eye because that, those would be the first church, okay, and he's given us the understanding uh, to be able to understand who our oppressor is and who our enemy is, okay, and he's the shadow of thy wings goes into the Lord what covering us. Okay, giving us a shelter and giving us refuge and giving us what a comfort through what these scriptures. Nine, from the wicked that oppress me, from my deadly enemies who can pass me about. So they're all around us. Okay, you have where these were, there's still hangings. You have where children are still getting taken. Okay, uh, where a lot of children are in these different foster care systems. Going into the, the, the rule that they had in 1968, the, the no man in the house rule. Okay, and that led to a lot of destruction. I just did a video about it yesterday. Uh, a lot of destruction of the family. And that led to um, people being on drugs and people getting uh, uh, molested and, and all sorts of uh, things. And that leads to where, where children are in a place where they shouldn't be. They're not with their families. Okay, and Esau Edom has, has, uh, has um, put his hands or, you know, um, to, to, to touch these, these, uh, these evolved in pedestry. Look at, look at Pedo Joe. Okay. And the thing is, is that they're all around. Psalm 17 and 9, protect me from the wicked, okay? Protect me from the wicked people who are attacking me from the murderers, okay, and enemies who surround me, okay? They are enclosed in their own fat. With their mouth, they speak proudly. Yeah, they boast about these things, okay? You just saw the video. They're boasting, making songs about it, making plays about it, okay, about the deleting of 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 babies of children of babies of our children that's why it says in the scriptures isaiah 14 and 21 prepare slaughter for their children okay because they have done that to us okay and it's only and, and, and again i read the scripture revelation 13 okay you kill with the sword you shall be killed with the sword okay they are enclosed in their own fat yeah their own their own uh uh power uh, that the Lord has given them on the left hand side. They have no as if they have now come past us in our steps. They set their eyes bowing down to the earth. So how are they looking down on us? Through the internet. Okay? Through what our phones, through our smart through the through the uh, smart TVs. They're looking down at us um and and what um looking for their prey. Okay? And what's their prey? Um, the so-called Negro, so-called Latino, so-called Native Americans going into Ezekiel 35, that perpetual hatred, 
Okay, they it says they have now compassion. Psalm seventeen and eleven. They have now can pass us in our steps. They have set their eyes bowing down to earth like as a lion that is greedy of his prey, as it were a young lion lurking in the secret places. OK, so when you think about a, a lion, when he's hungry, what does he do? He gets his prey. OK, and that's how Esau Edom's coming. He's coming as as to get his prey, which is you, Jake. OK, and a young lion is is, is ferocious. OK, whenever you see a lion in the jungle, everybody starts to spread out. And that's how it is when you see the police. Everybody starts to spread out and go their own way. They, they clear the block or whatever, you know. And that's how Esau Edom is. Because what does he do? He's coming to bring a terror on people. Okay? He's not coming to be your friend. He might come in a suit. Okay? But he's actually, uh, uh, you know, his words were smoother. <laughs> his words were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. Okay? He's always got them daggers with him because he hates you. Okay? Going back to Genesis 4. Genesis 27 and many other scriptures. Okay, the, this is Malachi 1 and 4. This is the border of wickedness. These are the rulers of darkness. These are not your friend. Okay, does that mean gather up arms? No, that means what? Uh, repent to the Lord and and and, and uh, learn, eat this whole row and go out and teach. This is this is our uh, our weapon. Let me get let me get that scripture. This is Second Maccabees. 15 and 15, whereupon Jeremiah's holding forth his right hand gave to Judas a sword of gold and even giving it spoke thus. So that sword is what the Bible, okay? Take that holy sword, a gift of the Mosai, Yahweh Shemah with that which thou shalt wound our adversaries. And that's how we wound our adversaries, okay? With this holy, with the, with the holy sword, okay? Which is the Bible, okay? And it says Psalm 17 and 13, Arise, O Yahweh Shemashai, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Okay, so King David knew that the, his that the Lord's sword was Esau Edom. Okay, Isaiah ten and five, the Syrian, the rod of my anger. Okay, Psalm seventeen and three. Arise, O Yahweh Shemashai, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. From men which are the hand of Yahweh Shemashai. From men which are the hand of Yahweh Shemashai, from men of the world which have their portion. So they have their portion to be in rulership, to be pushing forth the evils on our people, which have their portion in this life, and whose belly thou fillest with the hid treasure. Okay, and what is the hid treasure? Okay, the elect. Okay, the 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 the, the two uh, the, the the two prophets. Okay, that torment in a day and night. They have they have us under possession. Okay, their portion in whose belly thou fillest thy hid treasure, they are full of children and leave the rest of the substance to their babes. Yeah, so again, they just pass it on to uh, the next generation. Okay, and now this is the third, fourth generation that the Lord is coming to punish. Okay, so I want to get one more scripture and I'll just go back to, I read it earlier, but I'm going to bring it out again. This is Ezekiel. 35 and 2 son of man set thy face against mount seir and prophesy against it so that's the so-called white man and saying to the and say thus said yahweh shemashai behold O mount seir i am against thee i will stretch out my hand against thee i will make thee most desolate i will lay low the city's waste and thou shalt be desolate and thou shalt know that i am yahweh shemashai because thou hast a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of children of israel Okay, by the force of the sword in the time of the calamity and the time of their iniquity had an end. Okay, and now they're at the, the uh, we're at the point where uh, their wicked deeds have been fulfilled, and now it's the end of their rulership. Therefore, as I live, said Yahweh Shai, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. And now, since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate and cut off from it that passeth out and him that returneth. And I will fill his mountains and his slain men in the hills and the valleys and the rivers and they shall fall that all slain with the sword. I will make these perpetual desolations and cities shall not return and shall know that I am Yahweh Shai, Because thou hast, thou hast said these two nations, the northern and southern tribes, right? These two nations, 
the Hebrew Israelites, and these two countries shall be mine, and we possess them where Yahweh Shema Shai was there. And that's what Esau Edom uh, is saying. These are these are my nations. No, they're Yahweh Shema Shai's nation. Therefore, as I live, said Yahweh Shema Shai, I will even do according to thine anger. Yeah, according to thy anger. And according to thy envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them, and I will make thyself known among them when I have judged thee. Let me read this in NLT. Therefore, Ezekiel 35 and 11 in the NLT. Therefore, as I live, says the sovereign Lord, I will pay back your anger deeds, your angry deeds with my own. I will punish you for all your acts of anger and envy and hatred. Okay, and I will make myself known to Israel by what I do to you. That's right. And thou shalt know that I am Yahweh Shemar Shai, and that I have heard all the blasphemies which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel, saying they are laid desolate, they are given us to consume. Thus said Yahweh Shemar Shai, Sakya, thus with your mouth you have boasted against me, and you have multiplied your words against me, and I have heard them. Yeah. The fool had said in his heart, there is no God because Esau, Edom has a God complex and he thinks he is the most high. So he's boasting against um, Yahabah Shemar Ashai. Okay. Thus said Yahabah Shemar Ashai, when the whole earth rejoice, I will make thee desolate. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel because it was desolate, so I will do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, and I and all I do me, even all of it, and they shall know that I am Yahabah Shemel Ashai. Okay? And that's going to be the judgment for um, the, the, the biblical Edomites, you so -called, the so-called white man. Let me read this in NLT. Ezekiel 35 and 15. You rejoice at the desolation of Israel's territory. Now I will rejoice at yours. You will be wiped out, your people of Mount Seir, and who live in Edom. Then you will know that I am Yahabah Shemel Ashai. So with that, Call Allah Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rakakwadash. Shalom to the elect. Kwam Yashallah.